Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays. The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus, where, I mean, it was 25 wins in a row, it's nothing special about that. We're zaning it up, that's the idea, anyway. We got TNT and Incubus. We got TNT and an Incubus. Uh, 0 0.87 speed. 15 rate of fire. 3.28 damage. Bad speed, bad rate of fire, okay damage. HP is fine. Um... And Incubus is lovely. Incubus basically means our DPS is probably not doubled, but if you actually looked at it like... I don't want to say mathematically. What's the, what's the word I'm looking for here? I think if you just looked at it analytically, we're going to hit with more shots than one for every one that we fire, if that makes sense. Sometimes Incubus is going to be in line, because love isn't always on time, but sometimes Incubus is going to miss. That was like the weirdest, but somehow seemingly still rhyming sentence of all time. Sometimes Incubus <laughs> is gonna shoot in a line, it's gonna miss the line because love isn't always on time. And sometimes Incubus is gonna miss. I made it worse the second time. Sometimes if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Wow, okay. Hushy, little hush. We got the hush, we got the power. I don't know how we're gonna try to make this work, but I do think that this item... It's got something. I don't know what it is yet. And I've, I've really been trying to find situations that make it work well for us. It's almost like a really, really, really bad Blue Baby's only friend. And I think that's why I like it. Because I got a soft spot for that item to begin with. I wish it moved when we were shooting, though. I mean, obviously that would make it a little hard to control. But on the other hand, like... I hate that sometimes we have to dodge and we can't shoot in the process or we have to shoot in the process to keep enemies away from us and it just fucks up the whole equation. Either way though. Duke of Flies, no hard feelings there. Uh, I'll take anything. Honestly, we could do with HP, we could do with damage, we could do with tears. We could do with utility. And we're gonna get HP, which is fine. Not the most valuable thing for me, but not the worst either. So, last thing we're gonna do on this floor is just throw down the TNT here and check for a second secret room. The second secret room has given us three black hearts, which basically, this might as well have given us a deal with the devil. So that is a hugely important room here. And uh, no arcade for the next floor, but just moving along with a decent selection. All I can hope is that we fight bosses who are like half stationary. If we can fight a boss that's a piece of paper or a greeting card or perhaps a scented marker. See, that's that's just what we call a groaner in the industry. I mean, I'm not in the industry, which is a groaner in and of itself, but you get the idea. Um, really should be using TNT like every room. There's no reason not to use it unless we're going to accidentally shoot it, which actually is a higher probability than you might expect thanks to uh, Incubus, I think, but... Either way, Tinted Rock gives us two more Spirit Hearts. I actually think that TNT might be an item uh, that I've underrated. As much as it pains me and my ego to uh, admit that, uh, it's basically like... Well, let me put it this way. It's not as good offensively as Mr. Boom. Because Mr. Boom has a timed explosion, which means that it's uh, a lot easier to actually get to use this against a boss than placing it down, hoping they get to the right spot, shooting it, hoping that the shot actually blows it up at the right time, etc, etc. You know, there's some, there's some problems associated with that. However, we also use Mr. Boom a lot of the time for utility purposes, so I think that being able to use this twice as often definitely makes up for it. The scissors is horrible, so that's not even close. Um, and the Chariot, mostly I'm going to use this to ride out I'm excited on the boss, if possible. Cracked Dice? I mean, actually, we should take it. So how does Cracked Dice work? I often forget, but I believe that Cracked Dice gives you um, a random dice effect on the room every time you get hit. So, sometimes, ooh, sometimes this will give us D6 when we don't want it. Sometimes it'll give us a D20 when we've been begging for it, so... There's, uh, there's positives and negatives there. For now, though, I feel really good about the way this run looks. We are lacking in the damage department. We're lacking in the DPS department. We're great on HP. The only problem, really, is, uh, is our, uh, our damage. If we can stack up damage, 
Doesn't even have to be Rate of Fire, because Incubus almost compensates for it. And any damage upgrade we get, uh, first off, it's going to be out of address when we meet Jim West. But secondly, it's also going to give us a, uh, a proportional or even one-to-one -one damage upgrade for Incubus. So I'm not going to sweat um, till I can't sweat no more, okay? The whole thing is, the whole video is just going to be references to 90 songs. Is that okay? It's what you're here for, I assume, at this point. Is this the longest second floor in human history? Well, actually, the longest second floor in human history is the Woolworth Building in downtown Manhattan, New York City, built in the 1930s by Frank Lloyd Wright. Okay, you, it's amazing. I didn't realize we had a bunch of literalists who are also architectural historians very fond of the architecture of New York City on the show. It's a highly specific group of people. I didn't understand that uh, the convention was taking place in my office this week. Actually, uh, for legal purposes, it's not really an office. It's more of a closet that's been converted to a workspace. All right, look, who are you, the IRS? Crash into this barrel like it's the number one Dave Matthews Band song of 1994. I don't care if you got me slipping and sliding, dude. This is why I put my Crocs on today. Ah, it's okay. That was also a joke. I don't own Crocs. I have, uh, I have two pairs of shoes. That's really, really good. I have a pair of New Balance sneakers that I replace once per year because I wear them 365 or 363 days a year, something like that. Then I have a pair of dress shoes which I wear when someone I know dies or gets married. So those are in storage right now. I, I'm kind of reaching that point in which like, like, Three or four years ago, I was like, yeah, I don't own a suit. I don't need to own a suit. I'm free from the corporate ladder, man. I don't need to own a suit. And now I'm like, damn, dude, I'm almost 30 and I don't own a suit? What if somebody's like, you know, hey, we're throwing a wedding, surprise, it's like tomorrow. I gotta go down to like Moore's Men's Warehouse and go uh, pick one up? I think it's, it's unbecoming of a man my age to not at least have a suit on the ready, but maybe this is just my antiquated idea of what, like, masculinity is like, you know? What's, what's being a man all about? You work hard, pay your bills, as Chris Rock said, you get the big piece of chicken, and then, you, you own a suit. Your dad's always got a suit on the go, right? I don't know what on the go means in this case, but you get the idea. I don't know, it's a big purchase, so I'll have to think about it. But whenever I see, like, a 16-year-old kid that owns their own suit, I'm like, God damn it, I'm falling behind the curve. I'm gonna be interviewing for this against this guy with, for jobs in, like, three years. Well, hopefully not three years. Hopefully there won't be jobs in three years because of the, uh, you know, the eternal life and something Mars colony. I don't know, vaguely futuristic joke insert here. Um... Or maybe they'll make another Isaac expansion, and I can keep doing this forever. We haven't had a syringe yet, so that's a little bit of a risky pickup on uh, on our uh, experimental treatment, but it worked out just fine. We also picked up Abaddon. Now, do you want Book of Sin, or do you want TNT? Here's the thing. TNT, better than expected? Yes. Zany? No. It's, it's just an explosion on occasion. Now, Book of Sin, zany? No, also not zany, fair enough, but uh, just a better item. And in, in unzany situations, I'd, I'd say that the, uh, the better item prevails here. And do we want the tick? I don't know, I feel like there is a case to be made that we can do something with cracked dice. So hear me out here, what am I thinking with cracked dice? You get IV bag, and then you abuse it to try to get like mad D20 plays that give you endless batteries, and then these batteries... I mean, you probably don't want to use them with Book of Sin. I'm try I mean, what are you using a battery for if you're holding IV bag? That's a good point. Maybe we don't even. Maybe we want runes. You get Yara runes. You double everything. Hurt yourself with IV bag to get them. You know, get 99 of each consumable. But then that's just points. So how do you get chests out of it? I guess you wait till it happens on the chest, and maybe you can make your dreams come true there. But you know, as, this is what <laughs> I, I feel like. Everybody who's been wanting me to break Isaac in episodes was like, you're like. 95% of the way there. Uh, there's no doubt I'll commit to that. You're 95% of the way there. You just haven't haven't taken the full plunge yet. Um, by the way, sad bombs combined with uh, 
great damage combined with Death's Touch. This is like amazing uh, opportunities for us here. We still, let's put it this way. Two floors ago, we were using Little Hush to do like half of our damage. Now, uh, that won't be strictly necessary. So we are closing in on a month of wins uh, in a row. Although we've had some semi-bad dailies over that time, but not many, honestly. Just the, just the, maybe three. Um, this might cap off like the best month of Isaac I've ever had. At least in terms of like run quality. Now there's something to be said. Maybe a little bit low on the zaniness side at times. The data miner run was a crucible for that. But um, like 30 wins in a row roughly. Plus a bunch of really good dailies. I'd feel pretty good about myself about the month of February here. And that's, I mean, it is, I mean, I'm revealing the backlog a little bit here. This is probably going up in like the first or second week of March because I got a pretty nice backlog right now. But that's the price you pay in order to have, uh, you know, videos every day. Is when I got more time, we got to do that. When you got time, you invest it. When you don't got time, you mill from the backlog. It's the way it works. Plus, it's not like... At this point, there's definitely a case to be made. Having a backlog in a game that I suck at and have a lot to learn, like XCOM, for example. In Long War 2, having a, like, 10-video backlog is suicide. Because I'm like, you know, I started on episode 1, I get to episode 10. The situation has changed around me, but I haven't changed accordingly. In Isaac, let's be honest, dude. This is like, uh... You know, Anthony Hopkins in Sounds of the Lambs. I can come in, film my lines, I'll be done by Thursday. Just give me the Oscar. Like, okay, that's a little bit uh, self-inflating. I'm clearly not trying to suggest that my work on these videos is equivalent to, you know, one of the greatest, best supporting actor wins of all time. All I'm saying is, my Isaac skill and knowledge do increase, but they increase much, much, much more slowly than they... Uh, than they do in other games. The Isaac backlog is a beautiful thing. You may disagree. Hey, did you hear the news? 2016's finally over. Goodbye, 2016. Good riddance. Things can't possibly get any worse next year. What are your New Year's resolutions? See, that's when the backlog gets bad. When all of a sudden you're like, uh, you know, you're talking about things that happened three months ago. Two months. Three months. Two months. <laughs> Ansus. Um, we'll grab that. We might as well blow this guy up. I thought I placed a bomb down, but apparently did not. And you know what? Sure. I never use... There's a couple cards in Isaac, or a couple uh, items as well that qualify for this, but that I never use effectively, or very, very rarely use effectively. So my new MO is use them as soon as possible. And by new, I mean like within the past three months. Two months, three months. Um... Diplopia is not one. I still think Diplopia is worth giving it a try. Uh, you know what is one, though? Credit card. The number of times I have effectively used credit card, like used it effectively, um, are, or is probably lower than the number of times I've not used it at all despite holding it. Like, that's just... You're like, oh, I don't want to use it for this. We can get permanent Polaroid invincibility. I don't want to use it to get an item from the shop. You know, this item's not that good. Really, I think you should just look at it as... I think credit card is overrated because you have to find like the perfect situations to get the maximum value out of it. To get any value out of it is easy. I think we de-aided ourselves there and got a speed upgrade um, and a damage upgrade? Like Cursed Dice or Cracked Dice is doing some good stuff for us right now. I still don't fully understand it as a trinket but you know, best time to learn about that would have been like a year and a half ago. Um, second best time is right now. Honestly, a really good selection of pills. Um, we did get a health upgrade out. We got a vert pill that gives us another range up. I mean, there's no benefit to holding a range up. We might as well take it and move along here. Kind of hoping for a red heart just in case we get a deal with the devil. Oh, you know what? That's boss rush access. Prayer card. I don't know if prayer card's the right choice for us right now, but we're early enough that I think taking the HP is certainly not bad. Uh, although it, it could get bad. You know what? I want this, just in case we get a deal with the devil chance. Uh, we're going to use our stars card to get out of boss rush. I've been doing boss rush so much lately on these dailies that to get out of boss rush is like... It's like having a kid, I imagine, and then being like, Hey, do you want us to look after your kids so you can, like, you know, 
go sleep for 10 hours a night this weekend? I am very eager to do this. So we get Mysterious Candy and the Cracked Ice. Wow, to what do we owe the honor? Honestly, three cents for the Red Heart for insurance to possibly get something here, I feel okay with. So, I'm gonna get rid of the Book of Sin in favor of Head of Krampus. It's not really a big, you know, to-do about this decision. It's really just... I, I want to, and Book of Sin is not doing a whole heck of a lot for me right now, so... Feel like, why not? Okay, we've re-rolled all the dice on this room. Or, sorry, all the rocks on this room, thanks to Cracked Dice. Um, it's not... <laughs> Really worth anything for us to have done that, but that's okay. So the stars, it's so tempting to just pop it right now, but... Let's hold it in for now, save it, use it later, it'll be worth something. It's a very strong run. It's weird because it's also like slow, or at least slower than you would expect given the quality of the items that we got, but slow and steady wins the race when it comes to Isaac, man. Well, that's not always true. In fact, I don't even know if that's true most of the time. But it did sound good in the moment, so I, uh, I stand by it. Despite its, uh, lack of veracity. Hermit card. Uh, do you want stars or hermit? They're one and the same. The thing is, we don't want to use either of them right now because it's going to lead to us, uh, having to backtrack. So, you know, to save one twelfth of our keys, that was not very smart, is basically meaningless. Had a pretty bad floor here. I'll be the first to tell you. Those pills are not going to help. You know what? Matthias, I am going to relax. Thank you. This was a terrible uh, cracked dice setup, dude. We got a speed... Or sorry. Yeah, we did get a speed down. And a tears down. And a damage downgrade. So... We're lucky that we're like actually extremely well insulated from that. Because the run is great, but... I, I can't really complain about having 11 damage, even when our rate of fire is not amazing, but... We're, we're kind of looking forward to the next opportunity we might have to actually get hit. As long as we can do it in a productive way, like if we can get hit on the uh, on, a, on a blood bank or something like that, that would do it. We might want to stop using cracked dice when we get... Uh, when we get like a really good suite of stats. Which, to be honest with you, it's kind of like we discovered that at exactly the wrong moment, because I think that... We had a, a stats up in most relevant categories, and then we kind of squandered it by not even really noticing. Being like, wow, this run really picked up. How did it get so good so fast? I don't know, it must be my amazing skill. But we can still work around it. Uh, I mean, we should, we should. We got enough bombs to not uh, feel like they're this precious. Counterfeit penny? I mean, sure, we'll take that over the mysterious candy that I don't even really understand at all. And the idea is that Fighting Greed is not that bad. Uh, I don't know what we created there. What kind of dice makes that? D D1 can duplicate a consumable on the ground, but there was no consumable on the ground? I don't know. So we want to be out of this floor by 1630. We have Goat Head, so we're going to get a deal with the Devil. Obviously, we're not going to be out by 1630. Oh, we did get a stats increase there in most categories. Oh, in, in, in all good categories. You know what? Goodbye, Cracked Dice. Thank you for your support. Furp. Paralysis. Not the right call. Either way, though, we know we're not going to fight Krampus because we've already fought Krampus. So we're going to take our Cuba meat. We're going to go in here. We're going to take Book of Belial because it takes us closer to Bookworm. But I'm not 100% convinced on that. And then we're going to head down to the next floor here and probably try not to be as bad on this floor as we were on the floor that directly preceded it. But we definitely want to make boss rush as well. Again, teleporting out of boss rush, it's one of the little things that makes life so livable, dude. Like, I love teleporting out of the boss rush. It makes you feel like you know what you're doing in this video game. Which sometimes can be a precious feeling. It's, a, it's an extremely reusable trick. And it is a trick. But it's valuable nonetheless. That was a, a bad place to stand. It's fair to say. It's not, it's not plausible that none of those contain anything. I'm sorry to tell you, game, but you have a bug. It's not plausible to blow up 20 mushrooms and not get a single pill. Even if it's a bad pill. You are in for a wild fucking ride, dude. Okay, so what's the, what's the dream item for us on Boss Rush? I'll be straight up with you. 
Please don't say Brimstone or Mom's Knife. Nah, Dr. Fetus, dude! If we can get Dr. Fetus, not Epic Fetus, if we can get Dr. Fetus, the world is our oyster. Especially if we can get, um, like, a quad shot or something along with it. I want... You get a lot of runs that have, like, good bomb synergy. I don't want good bomb synergy. I want the best bomb synergy. We're gonna have to be a little faster. I think Sack Dagger is lovely. Because of Goathead, um... I feel very comfortable that we can probably get the permanent Polaroid Invincibility because we're gonna get a deal with the Devil. It could just have Red Chest, but even a Red Chest with Guppy's Paw would do it for us. Um, or we can wait one more floor for a better deal with the Devil. Or we can wait two more floors for a better deal with the Devil if it's gotta happen, but... Um, we can't afford to give up our Red Hearts because Spirit Hearts are still pretty not precious right now. I'm gonna donate as much as we can. Just good to pay it forward in a situation like this. And it's not like we're doing anything with the money anyway, so... Grab an Ansus rune, which we'll actually take when we leave this floor. We're definitely going to make boss rush now. Unless the deal with the devil somehow takes us 10 minutes to sort out. 10 minutes is a hyperbole. If it takes us like, you know, 30 seconds to short out, or to sort out, we will definitely not make it, but... You get the idea. Alright, despite poor play, we're in a... Poor play recently. We're in a relatively dominant position here. Grab that, grab that, deal with the devil. Gives us the mark, which is basically like the most beautiful option we could hope for there. And Ghost Pepper's okay. Backstabber kinda sucks in my opinion. Ten extra bombs and X-ray goggles. We'll take Ghost Pepper. It's it's that confluence of being the most fun item and also I think probably the best. Although I think like and it's not that good. You could maybe make a case that X-ray goggles was the best there. I don't want to be the guy who has to argue. Oh well, you know you should don't put your money on red at the casino, sir. You should really put it in a you know fixed term GIC for one year at zero point seven percent. Look, that's you're right, okay. But it's kind of like a boring answer. And I'll be the first to tell you, boring is good. I don't know why I switched into my. God-awful Barack Obama impression for that. Boring is good. Boring gets a bad rap, and I'm here to be the guy who argues in favor of boring. You're watching all this media, I've been there. And I'm not I'm not throwing media under the bus here, because, you know, it makes for good drama. Good, good comedy, good thrillers, good science fiction. But, you, you see all these people, oh, it's so boring, it's so boring. I was bored as a child. I have not been bored, I think, since, like, turning 19. And I, when I talk about things like, yeah, I eat vegetables. People go, people my age sometimes, they go, that's boring. I only eat chicken nuggets shaped like dinosaurs. That's not, not boring. That's just a state of arrested development, man. Boring is good. Putting money in your retirement fund is good. But that means I can't fly to the Philippines at the drop of a hat. Sure, I mean, there is value to that. You are talking to somebody who, you know, despite not speaking the language, graduated directionless uh, from college and was like, you know what, let's go teach English in a foreign country. It's not like I was the first person who ever did it. I'm not like the Lawrence of Arabia for ESL teachers or something like that, but, you know, it, it was a bold decision. It wasn't like, oh, I'll, I'll just get a job at the grocery store until I can, you know, move up the corporate ladder or something like that. I understand having a sense of adventure. Which is why I get insulted when people are so anti-boredom. You know what's boring, man? Hard work. But that opens up doors. You could use those doors to go do some exciting things. You know? I feel like I, it always comes back to, like, learning code. But, like, people are always like, what do you want to do when you learn code? I want to make a video game. You know, I want to work on, you know, SpaceX. That's, all, that's amazing. These are the high-minded ideals. In order to do that... You gotta fizz buzz, you know? You gotta... You gotta learn how to, you know, properly pass a, a variable by reference. You gotta do some... You gotta learn, uh... No sequel, you know? You're gonna, you're gonna be doing some boring shit. And then... The culmination of doing, like, a lot of boring shit... Is... Amazing results eventually. You know, brief... Glimpses into something incredible. It's the same... It's gotta be the same when you're, like... An, a professional athlete, right? 
playing uh, playing a game in the NHL. That's probably pretty exciting. Spending the entire summer like working out, always watching what you eat. You know, you gotta that that's boring. You gotta make these boring sacrifices sometimes to um, in order to achieve exciting things. That's the lesson I want to give to you. I don't want to soapbox as always. You know, my advice is don't take advice from anybody who gives you unsolicited advice because. You know, they, they might not know what they're talking about. All I'm saying is that sometimes you gotta forego immediate excitement in favor of long-term fulfillment. In my opinion. But don't let me, especially if you're young, don't let me stop you from booking that one-way ticket to the Philippines and then just, oh, yes, I will take it. I will take it. Takes us low on HP, but we get Leviathan. And also, we're, we have Brimstone now, which is really good. And if you're gonna be pissed off about it, I'd like you to keep in mind, this is so good. Brimstone, uh, Sad Bombs is a great combo. So don't take this out on me, alright? Heading down to the next floor here. Will we fight Hush? I mean, I kind of feel like we could. HP's looking really solid right now. Um, might not do Void on this, I don't know, anyway. Again, like I'm not, I'm not trying to pre. It's. I see other YouTubers sometimes, and they're they're getting a little preachy. I do it myself sometimes. I gotta catch myself because I'm very cynical about it. I'm like, I don't know anything about life in the real world. For the past, you know, five years or so, I've sat down at this computer and played largely the same video game over and over. That's that's a very insulated uh, existence. But at the same time, I'm I want to fight for the causes I believe in. What causes do I believe in? Skydiving is not that cool, okay? Just because you jumped out of a plane. Who cares, man? Oh, I jumped out of a plane. Amazing. Yo, granddad jumped out of a plane. World War II liberated the world from the Nazis. Now, that's exciting, dude. He, he was like... When he was skydiving, aka paratrooping, he was like, man, this paratrooping is a really nice break from getting shot at. When we go skydiving in this day and age, we're like, man, this is gonna make a great Facebook profile photo. Hopefully it'll get me laid. You know, that's... We got our priorities all twisted up. Or do we have our prior... I'm not gonna argue that. <laughs> Maybe that's the backwards rationalization there. It's like, man, back when the whole world was fighting itself, that's when we had our heads screwed on straight. I don't know, that seems, that seems sort of backwards as well. Maybe we got it right right now. Anyway, um... Let's go check out this double key room. And it's actually a, like a quintuple key room. That's fine. Got IV bag, which we don't give a shit about. Um, but you know what's cool? It's not the skydiving, man. It's the dude who went to fucking pilot school and got the license to fly the plane that drops the skydivers. That's the guy I want to have a beer with. I don't want to have a beer with somebody, oh, what was bungee jumping in Mexico like? You would not believe it. You jumped off a bridge and then you came back up. I was so in touch with Mother Nature and Sir Isaac Newton. I mean, that's fine. Like, I'm not trying to insult you if you did that. You're, but in a way I am, because you're already getting enough credit. Come on. Like, somebody's got to pull you down, back down to planet Earth here in the same way that the bungee cord pulled you back up. Let's see what we got here. We're going to, we're going to invest in the guppy dream here, I think. And Rotten Baby's also amazing. We got enough money, let's try to make Hush happen here. Plus, I'm making a point. But nobody gives respect to the dude who's like, he's been a chartered accountant for like 30 years. He gets a gold watch on the day he finishes. And then people like, always look at him whenever they have a meeting with him. They're like, does this guy think that he wasted his life? I bet he loves it, dude! I bet he, he loves arithmetic and problem solving. That's the dude I want to have a beer with. I'll be like, dude, what's the craziest tax story you've ever had? And they'll be like, oh, well, back when I was representing Al Capone. Well, that's a little too far, maybe. Um, so we're going to take the Omega Penny. Yes, 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 yes. We're going to take the Omega Penny. Even if only briefly. And we're going to take it. We're going to put it up here. And again, this is, this is a toast for all my boring dudes and dudettes out there. You might think like, NL, why do you hate me for being adventurous? That's not the case. It's not the case at all. I'm just trying to give... You don't understand. If you're not innately adventurous, you don't get any respect, man. 
Everybody's always like, oh, what did you do with your summer? Oh, I learned a new language. What'd you do with your summer? Had ten beers a night? Sick, man! Like, you gotta... Somebody's gotta be fighting for this... For these higher-minded ideals. And if not, a dude completely talking out of his ass in a YouTube video, then who? That's what I ask you. Then who? Oh, I forgot we had Incubus. I was like, why are we shooting a thousand brimstone lasers of varying width? Now, it's not even close to summer vacation, so... I, I can't really get on a soapbox and be like, yeah, so this is summer vacation, learn a skill! But, you know, hey, keep trying hard, you know? That's important. Don't forget to have fun as well, but, you know, keep it in balance. For every one year of school, you get straight A's, one hour of video games. That's the rule I'm going to put my kids to. That's not true. I'll probably be too soft as a parent. My, my kid will, like, you know, get arrested for... Vandalizing a city artifact at like age 13 or something like that. What is a city artifact? Oh, you guys don't have city artifacts? You know, constantly grave robbers are trying to steal, um, you know, the mummy's tomb in downtown Vancouver? See, like, that's what, when it comes to, like, parenting, that's what I'm worried about is that I'm gonna be too nice. And there's, there's worse things to be, for sure. But you can also, you can mess your kid up by being too nice. I have to admit that my parents were probably a little bit too nice to me. I think that, and I, I, it's really just, you know, I must have a great genetic concoction of not wanting to get in trouble. Because, uh, I, I never really sought it out for the most part. So, like, despite maybe being able to get away with some stuff, I never really did it. But, you know, does lightning strike twice? I don't know. When I was going uh, off to university, my dad took me aside and he's like, Hey son, like, just so you know, like, before you go, if you ever want to have a beer, just let me know. We can, like, have a beer. And I basically responded in, like, the most leave it to beaver way you could possibly imagine. Like, no thank you, sir. Uh, that's the devil's juice, you know? Like, not quite the devil's juice. I mean, it was, like, a little, it was more of an agnostic rebuttal. But um, he was just like, man, this guy's going to get beaten up. I didn't, thankfully, but, uh, you know, certainly could have happened, but that's, you know, we could have gotten away with maybe a little bit more back then, that's okay. Lightning doesn't strike twice, you gotta be like, a little bit of a dick to handle kids, that's what I learned when I was a teacher as well. The number one teaching lesson is like, you know, you gotta be stern. Because kids don't understand logic until they're like, you know, 12 years old. When they're like 5, you gotta be like, hey, don't do that. And then when they do it, you gotta be like, I said, don't do that! Go to the principal's office. And they're crying, and you're like, well, I mean, I feel bad. I made a 5-year-old kid cry, but... Now nobody's gonna start shit in this classroom. I'll tell you that much. Oh, but the kids didn't like you that much. It doesn't matter. I'm not there to be a friend to a five-year-old child. I'm there to teach them how to say hello, how are you, I'm fine, thank you, and you. And teacher, I have to go to the bathroom. Those are like the, at least for kids that young, those are like the eight phrases. If you finish the class with those eight phrases, and I can understand you when you say them, you're getting an A. Go Enjoy Harvard. Anyway. This, this episode has gone off the rails in what I would consider to be, like, the best way possible. Uh, we're going to win, and we're going to win handily, probably. Not in record time, necessarily, but... By the way, why didn't I, uh... Why didn't I go to Void? Or Delirium, rather? Or, no, wait, Void was right. Um, well, I don't want to. Plus, we have, uh, the Omega Penny. And the Omega Penny is an awesome enabler of cool stuff on the chest. So I don't feel like we need to either. Let's pop ourselves in here. Get a map going on here and rank up to win uh, 26 years. Okay, so don't hate me because I'm a genius, alright? Soy milk is a bad item with brimstone. It's not zany, it's just frustrating. Polyphemus is amazing, of course. So, I mean, like, I'm getting, I'm, I'm eating out of both sides of the trough here. That's an expression that makes no sense, but... Basically, I'm having my cake and eating it, too. And then we'll try to double it up, which worked completely fine, thankfully. We got some good items out of it. But, um, you know 
I am, like, the number one supporter of soy milk in God's green fucking earth, okay? I am the only person, well, I'm one of the only people I know that will take soy milk almost regardless of the situation. So when I'm not taking soy milk, I hope that I've earned a little bit of trust. And you're going to be like, this guy's just not taking it because he doesn't want to lose. You know, you're, instead you're going to be like, this guy... You know, he's had some brimstone soy milk experiences before in his life, and, uh... You know, he's, he's not up for that... He's not up for going down that lonely road anymore. I don't remember... I, think, I mean, perks are actually a fine pill at this stage in our life, but, uh... Nothing can really stop us. I mean, the sad bombs with brimstone are just too strong. You gotta check it, right? Um... There's no... There's no point... Oh, there is a point to Omega Penny. Yeah, there you go. So we got Blue Baby's only friend. We're not going to use it, in case you were worried about that, but it does exist. We do have Judas's Shadow just kind of just kind of hanging out. I don't think we're ever going to get any use of that, and that's completely okay. Well, before we take this, we should get one more charge. I know there's a battery, but, you know, no skin off our scrub to fight one last enemy. And then we get Monstro's Tooth, which is not suited to Omega Penny. We take Holy Water, Omega Penny, we got a penny out of it. We batted like a little bit above 500 with the Omega Penny today, though. I think that's pretty solid. I mean, a relatively small sample size, to be sure, but either way, a fun run. Go out there and, and work hard, kids and also adults, statistically young adults who watch these videos. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.